No, don't, don't flip, okay? They just want to bang. Anybody confused here, or is it just me? Oh, yeah, we're back. Can you feel the buzz? The energy here on the third floor of E! Entertainment Television. Everywhere I look, people coming to and fro, walking around with walkie-talkies, actors here, actors there. I don't want to start Monday off with a big joke, but it appears E!'s doing a sitcom. I kid you not. I've seen production happening in this building as we speak. Have you seen it around here? It's craziness today. But it's a fun craziness. Welcome, it's Talk Soup. Hope you had yourself a good weekend. Greg Kinnear back with you to chart all of the most memorable happenings from the day in talk, or days as it were. Just ahead, meet a transsexual beauty queen. Jerry Springer travels back to, I guess, the Middle Ages a little bit later on in one of those past life transgressions to find out he was a knight and shining armor. In shining armor. The point is, there's also a surprise wedding coming up later. First up, the Rocky the Wonder Dog. That's not really his name, but it should be after a little stunt he pulled in his neighbor's backyard. The fact is, this scrappy little chihuahua somehow managed to mount a full-grown Wattweiler last week. Right now, Maury Povich brings this mind-boggling story to light. His name is Rocky, and Rocky impregnated a Rottweiler, just like that. Rottweiler, the one we have from the Malibu Pet Hotel. Now, this may sound pretty average to you, right? This a Rottweiler like this gets impregnated by a dog named Rocky. But then again, we haven't met Rocky. Rocky, would you please come out? <laughs> oh, now wait a sec. Hey, hey, wait a second. That's... <laughs> God, hey, that's no dog. That's Tom. Real mature. Could we please see the real Rocky now? Rocky, would you please come out? I think Rocky wants to have another go at it. <laughs> what sort of experiment is Maury talking about here? It's the highlight of the Maury Povich show there, a Chihuahua versus a Rottweiler. And quite frankly, I'm still trying to visualize this whole thing, but I'm not having a whole heck of a lot of luck. Maybe this will help. Would you believe that we have an actual photograph of the Dirty D? <laughs> We don't normally do this. However, in an effort to find out the truth, <laughs> this is what happened. <laughs> I think Maury's starting to miss a current affair. Getting to the truth of the matter. Well, on Maury's show this Wednesday, some childless couples explain, explain why they never ever want to be parents. It's Childless by Choice Wednesday. Friday, Bertice Berry show focused on teen problems today, as evidenced by an extraordinarily high teen pregnancy rate in this country. One major problem today seems to be peer pressure. They talked about that. Girls, they bold today. They tell you, they'll tell you in a minute that they want you to have sex with them. I had plenty of times when I have appointments, you know, not to go to school in the morning. A girl calls, excuse me, what you doing today? You going to school? And it depends on how I feel. You know, if I want to stay there, I'll stay with her. If not, I'll just go to school. I had an appointment this morning, but I had to come to the show, so, you know, I'm here. <laughs> What's interesting here, okay, stand up for me. What's interesting is, you all are applauding, it's like, yeah, an appointment, is, are they called appointments now? What, wait, stand up. What's it called? Booty call. A, bo booty, a call? booty call? That's what they call <laughs> So, so you okay. get a call and you, oh, it's a booty call, let me go. Okay, this is what it is. Um, back to what they were saying. Females are nasty. Yeah, I have to agree, we are both. 
But boys are also, they would tell you, um, you got a nice body, I just want to bang you. And that's all they want. That's like my, like my girl said. I just want to what? They just want to bang you. That's all. <laughs> they bumping jib and all the other stuff. But what, Any I'm, of the adults, are you, is this amazing you? The language, stand up for me. The language is absolutely amazing. Have you heard any of this before? Stand up for me. Is this new? Very. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm so glad we're doing the show because even the language we have never heard. Booty call? Yeah, or bumping the jig, slapping the teen square, lancing the boil, burping the flatware, sneezing the grease, rolling the Logan, spanking the fire crab. On Wednesday's show, Bertice meets real-life call girls, love for sale, lease, rent, with an option to buy, Wednesday. 1994 already shaping up to be an extremely strange year, not only in just general social, cultural consciousness, but right here on Talk Soup as well. Leave it to Mo Gaffney to focus on some of the weirdest new products debuting on the market. Friday, she spoke with marketing expert Alvin Kupperman and learned about a little device known as the rubber tree, and that, that goes something like this. This is called the rubber tree. Now, we were talking about condoms earlier and how important they are. Well, this, this is sort of a device to get us to lighten up about condoms and You're gonna not, love this. not to take this too seriously, although it's a, it is a serious subject, but it's very important to know about condoms and, to, as I said, to lighten up about them. We may have to wait a few seconds yeah. while we're going on, so we'll just keep an eye on that for just a second and move on to the next product. This is This funny. is called Poopettes. Now, this is also something that we should know about. We were talking about ecology <laughs> and... <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> well, it does work, as you see. It does work. <laughs> the rubber tree retails for nine ninety five. Later on, Alvin handed Mo a little item called a poop pet. This is made out of one hundred percent cow manure. <laughs> oh. Well, but it's it's totally sanitized. It has no odor. It's totally clean. Yes, indeed. That's the highlight of Mo Gaffney. You know, our own John. Esposito works right here on this little enterprise, and he's, you know, he's no rocket scientist, but uh, he certainly knows style, and he's uh, got a little hat that he wears around the building that just says poop on it, and I don't think he knows that we're not kind of laughing with him, we're laughing at him when he walks around, you know, hey, what are you guys doing? I'm John Esposito. It's, um... It's really kind of sad. Yeah. This Wednesday on Mo's show, a group of male panelists discuss what men really want out of life and out of their relationships. I'm kidding with you, Johnny. What did you say? 100% cow manure that's made of. That's right. Coming up, Sir Gerald of Springer rides again and wants that out of our system. A greedy mistress gets a little philosophical next and talks to. Do you respect yourself? I don't have a problem with what I'm doing, you know? Men think, you know, you can give it away all day long and it's like, hey, cool, great, you know? Men want prime rib and they want to pay for a Happy Meal. Hey guys, life got you down? Social life not quite up to snuff? Try the new poop hat. It's all the rage. We're back. This is Talk Soup. As Jenny Jones discovered, I guess this was on, what, Friday? You were telling me? Sherry, Sherry, who you're about to meet seconds from now, is a nothing but a money-grubbing mistress who apparently doesn't care for men too much. She likes a few of them, as long as they're rich, generous, and just I mean, a little sleazy. Anything you ask for, pretty much you get from him. But well, there's a limit. I don't try to push it too far. I don't ask for a new car. But, you know. <laughs> His wife knows close. about it. They, this has to affect their marriage. Are they His splitting? wife does not know. I'm sorry, it's, it's uh, Elaine's wife who knows. What is his status? He's, he's, he is separated and they are divorcing. But it's not for me. I hope not, because right. he can't have if me. If he is splitting up, would you want to marry this guy? No. no. God, no. Why, why not? No way. Okay. No, don't, don't flip, okay? <laughs> the man, he's immoral. And what I'm doing is immoral, too. But, you know, if Wait I want to have a... Wait a minute. Go ahead, go ahead. Precisely, go ahead. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? 
he's seconds. doing is immoral, I and I am immoral also. But, you know, if I'm going to settle down and have a family, I would not want to do it with someone who cheats on his wife. Because if he cheats on his, his first wife, obviously he's going to cheat on me. Yeah. Get a clue. Yeah, get a clue, honey. Come on now. What they step out, they step you, out always. Then how do you feel about yourself? I just said I was immoral. But you know? do, you, do you respect yourself? I don't have a problem with what I'm doing, you know. Men think, you know, you can give it away all day long and it's like, hey, cool, great, you know. Men want prime rib and they want to pay for a Happy Meal. It's not happening, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> Prime rib analogy seems appropriate here. It's the highlight of Jenny Jones. Apparently last month alone, Sherry was paid $1,700 for her vast array of services. On Jenny's show this Wednesday, his name is John Wayne, and he walks a bit like the Duke himself. It's the case of the missing organ part two. That will be Wednesday. Past life regression. We've seen it on Talk Soup more than once. What do you think? Is it a hoax? Is it real? Jerry Springer wanted to find out for once, for all, and forever, so he agreed to be hypnotized and actually travel back in time, way back. Here's some footage of Jerry reliving past glories from the days when he was a medieval knight. Somebody's being chased. Mm -hmm. And this person being chased, do you know who that is? No, just some woman. Right, and this woman who's being chased now, is it your duty to protect her in some way? I take it on as my duty. All right, so follow the through now. We catch up and there's a fight. Okay, and how has this fight uh, manifested? Are there any weapons being used in this fight? Swords. Okay, and what happens as a result of the sword fight? The woman gets away, but we're hurt. Are you, do you survive? You personally? Mm, yeah. Okay. Are you, are you significantly injured as a result of this sword fight? Pretty badly. All right. So what happens now? You say you survive this. Does this limit your functions as a knight now, and your ability to continue policing and doing your responsibilities that you were doing prior to this incident? Yeah, I can't ride a horse much anymore. Mm. It's kind of tough. Jerry Springer there. Later he transgressed into the past life of a bad Elvis Presley impersonator. That went a little something like that. Let me true, never let me go. Oh my darling. <laughs> On this Wednesday show, Jerry meets two sisters who say they are putty in the hands of their manipulative husbands. How to control your controlling spouse, Wednesday. By the way, the man who hypnotized Jerry is a practicing hypnotherapist as well as a dentist. Interesting combination. Ricky Lake loves playing matchmaker. She's done it over and over again since she debuted last September. Friday, she united a man named Dimitri with his secret admirer. To his surprise, that person turned out to be his own roommate. To the audience's surprise, Dimitri's mystery date also turned out to be a man. Oh, yeah. We're about to meet Dimitri and Ezra right now. Ezra, tell us a little bit about Ezra and your relationship. About our relationship? Yeah, Dimitri. Um, well, I met about a month and a half ago, and the first time I met him, I really thought, like, I wanted to take care of him because he's really sweet and he's really innocent. So, <laughs> so I asked him to live with me and because um, I wanted to help him out, not just because I was attracted to him, because, you know, he, like, I want to protect him. So, um, <laughs> we were together. So are you surprised, Dimitri? What's going on through your mind? I like him a lot. He's cute. <laughs> Yes. Um, excuse me, so now you think you're going to have a relationship or something? Um, do you think there's a relationship Maybe. in store? There's yeah, I think there's so one much. in store for us. Really? Yeah. Did you suspect this at all? No. No? No, not at all. Are, are you involved with anyone? Um, I'm sort of seeing a girl right now. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the audience might be having a little problem with this. Are you, ma'am? Excuse me. Do, do you go both ways? Yeah. I like both. Do you, does your girlfriend notice? I couldn't hear you. 
Does your girlfriend notice? Yeah, she likes it. Sam, <laughs> without further ado, let's, uh, let's bring that lucky lady out, shall we? Come on, everybody. Oh, there she is now. Ezra says that he's gay, not bisexual like Dimitri. He thinks Dimitri's girlfriend will, in fact, approve of their relationship. Me, I'm going on vacation. This Wednesday's show, Ricky lets some very frustrated little sisters air their complaints. They're tired of their overbearing big brothers. We'll take a quick break and be back in a moment with a surprise marriage proposal that catches Billy way off guard next. We're back. It's that talk soup thing continuing now. If you think General Custer rode into a nasty ambush, why do you see this next guy from the Richard Bay show? Billy thought he'd been invited on camera to talk about close friendships, thinking that was the subject matter that would be discussed on this particular episode. But secretly, his very dear and near sweetheart Yvonne was plotting to spring the big question on him all along. Take a look. Do you think about marriage at all? Eh, I don't know. Well, you're going to think about it a little bit more right now. Why? Because <laughs> Yvonne has something she'd like to say to you. Yvonne? Billy, I love you with all my heart. I would like to know if you'd like to get married. <laughs> this is a joke, right? I'm sure that was Ed Norton's response when Trixie proposed. <laughs> but just kidding, right? <laughs> she, are you kidding, Yvonne? No, I'm serious. I want to get married. My biological clock is ticking. <laughs> you proposing to me in front of five million people? <laughs> Billy, we, we have a minister here today, too, so you could start the ceremony. Say what? <laughs> I mean, through all this, Billy, we haven't had an answer yet. What is your answer? Yes. Yes, indeed. Another one of those touching, moving moments we've seen so many times in the Richard May show. Later in the program, Billy and Yvonne were actually married in front of the audience, and we thought it'd be fun to send them talk soup, his and her poop hats that Billy did with them. Email. On this Wednesday show, Richard confronts stubborn spouses, whoa, careful, who refuse to change. Honey, it's time to clean up your act and hit the road. Ah, yes, Friday. You might have heard about this, or, or maybe not. Shirley learned about a magic trick that backfired in a big way, then backfired again and again and again. Art is the name of the magician he shared on this program, one of his life's most embarrassing moments, as well as many other people, but nobody, nobody could top this oh-so-sad story. So I'm invited to a party by my best friend, uh, Paul, who, uh, there were a few girls there, and he says, why don't you do that levitation trick? And there's a real cute girl there that I really wanted to impress. So uh, I said, sure. So. I put myself in this so-called trance, and I said, lift me up and put me on the chair. And Paul would get up on the chair and would stand on my stomach. Now, I don't, I don't know how to, to <laughs> say this on TV. <laughs> That's the best part, because it's I'll so just, embarrassing. I'll just, I'll put it this way. Just as he was standing on my, well, I don't know what I had for dinner. But uh, <laughs> as he, get a shot of my stomach. I, I have to show you. As, as his foot comes down on my stomach, Okay, here it goes. All you hear is this. <laughs> really kind of sad, isn't it? I don't know what to do out of a moment like that other than simply say one more time in slow motion, please. Now let's move on. 
On Shirley's show this Wednesday, find out how to whip your husband into shape. Follow these tips and you'll be married to the perfect man. It's really sad. Coming up in a moment, after this break, it's Plumbing 101 with Tandy the Transsexual. Don't, don't you go away. Tandy. Tandy Andrews is one of the more striking women we featured here on Talk Soup. One minor detail, she's actually a guy. Tandy is what is known as a preoperative transsexual. What exactly does that entail? Here's Jane Whitney. I want to be with a man that is pretty much attracted to a woman. Okay, but, but anatomically, you are what? I'm a man. I'm, I'm still considered a male because of that final surgery that I don't have. But you have had, in other words, you're on your way to becoming a biological I'm considered woman. a preoperative transsexual. I'm the furthest you can go without having the final surgery from male to female. Which means you have had what done? I've had my breasts done. I've had seven, almost eight years of hormone treatment. I've been to psychiatrists. I've had therapy. Um, it's just a list of things like that. You know, you have to do it the right way. Well, you said that. Tandy's a former Miss Gay USA. Soon she'll be a former Mr. Also on the show is her current boyfriend. His name is Ronald. On this Wednesday show, Jane gets to know a computer heartbreaker. This woman seduces scores of online lovers. We're out of time, right? We'll see you back here tomorrow. I'm Greg Kinnear. Have yourself a good evening. <laughs>